Does your brain get jumbled and does it get stuck more often than you would like? And um, this happens far too often. It's happened for myself and I didn't know what to do about it. It happens for my clients. It happens for everybody, but it's not something that we talk about. And it's not something that we often know what to do about. So what we're going to go through today is I'm going to share with you three exercises that you can use to unjumble your brain and your thoughts. So we kind of talk about the thoughts often, but today we're actually going to talk about how the brain is impacted and how you can use these. Uh, I've got two strategies and then I have three practical tips that you can implement to uh, unjumble your brain and your thoughts uh, and realign your brain in terms of where it's at. And I guess Maybe if we start off with why is this happening? And maybe you can have a think about these concepts too. So wherever it are, wherever you are that you're watching, my name is Lisa Gumnick and I am passionate from lisagumnick.com and I am passionate about helping women reset their mind and their body to o- overcome stress, anxiety, overwhelm, sleep issues, um, problems with chronic pain chronic illness and really boosting and supporting immunity because I've been there. I've been so unwell with a whole of chronic illnesses and a whole heap of traumas and uh, and I didn't know what to do and how to become unstuck. Uh, So I've learned for myself and now I help others to learn the same, but also to guide them through the process because I'm a practitioner in NLP, EFT, um, psychoneuroimmunology, energetic health and healing, What else do we have in there? Uh, I'm studying um, some psychology at the moment and hypnosis and CBT therapy. I'm also a practitioner in brain spotting and SSP, safe and sound protocol. So what I do is I look at things from a very different perspective, which is using the body, the brain and the nervous system to find and gain healing. And we look beyond things like mindset and behavior change Uh, because that access is a certain part of the brain and that part of the brain often goes offline uh, when we're stressed or overwhelmed or unwell. And we look at ways of healing uh, and accessing the body and the brain that don't, uh, that kind of bypass those parts of the brain and the body. Uh, And it's something that's often missed in modern medicine. So that's a little bit about me, what I'm passionate about and how I might be able to help you. So what I wanted to start with today in this Um, talk and conversation and jump in, um, pop some comments in, let me know if you're watching this or the replay and and how this topic might relate to you or the concepts that I'm talking about. Say, yes, I hear you. Yes, I hear you. So why does our brain, let's start with, why does our brain get jumbled and stuck? Our brain get jumbled and stuck for a number of reasons. Number one, is there is so much stimulus in our life at the moment, isn't there? It's just coming from all avenues and all angles. There's so much going on in the news, with health, what's happening in the world at the moment. So there's all these different things coming at us, which can be really overwhelming and jumble our brain and our thoughts because it's in overload. Another thing is that, so number two is there's lots of triggers in our environment. So we are constantly being triggered. In the past, we used to be triggered by tigers, um, maybe sharks for those in Australia, uh, and, and a few other you know, animals we used to be triggered by. But we're triggered by so many things these days. Again, because of our environment. Things like, oops, our mobile phone. Every time our mobile phone goes ding, it's a trigger for us and for our body. Whether we know, you may not feel this or think this, you might be like, oh, I'm okay with my phone going off. But at a, um, at a deeper level, at a nervous system level, at a physiology level, there are changes happening within the body with things like your mobile phone going off and going ding. Um, or notifications on your computer popping up. Those pops are constant shocks to the body and to the nervous system. What else do we have? You know, we have cars, we have busy traffic, we have so much advertising and messaging coming to us with things like Facebook, which is, or, um, you know, YouTube or Instagram, which is potentially where you're seeing me now. 
And it's so much and it's so overwhelming for the body to have these messages constantly, even if they're subconscious messages coming towards us. Uh, and also, you know, things like work, the amount of pressure, the mental pressure that we're under in terms of work, how much we have to get done in what period of time, looking after, you know, family, uh, the kids, it's just constantly on the go. So we've got so much stimulus, we've got triggers from our environment, and, you know, we've got to think and coordinate so much and we have so much to do. So no wonder our brains get jumbled. Let me know if any of those points resonate with you. So why is it important to have a look at this concept of unjumbling our brain and our thoughts? Because if we don't unjumble our brain and our thoughts, then we stay in a, in a place of maybe fight, flight, freeze or overwhelm. And when we're in that state, our body shuts down and our body focuses on just being well or it focuses on, you know, the stresses around us. And like, oh, I've got this stress. I've got, oh, I'm predicting this stress is going to come up as opposed to relaxing. And so the body can't um, heal. The body can't replenish itself or do what it needs to do properly to function. So you're probably listening to me here because your body's not functioning in some way, shape or form. And it could be that you don't realize that these are some of the reasons that uh, that may be triggering, not just triggering, but maybe contributing to your level of stress or chronic illness or where you're at at the moment. Or you might say, yeah, Lisa, I know I've heard this all before, but I don't know what to do about it. And it's just modern society. But thinking about it, yeah, it kind of is modern society, but it wasn't modern when my grandparents were around. This is not what they went through. They didn't have all this stimulus. So we need strategies and techniques to help and support us during this, this, you know, living in this modern world with all these stimuli and things happening. So that's why it's important to be able to reduce our stress levels within our body, change our physiology, rewire our brain, you know, rewire and reset our body, our brain, our nervous system, our whole physiology, so that our body can heal, that we can have good immunity as our as opposed to our immunity being shut off because. Uh, it's, it's being suppressed by the level of stress that we're under. So let me know again if that resonates and if that makes sense. Or maybe there's some aha moments in this. So what else? Uh, so we've spoken a little bit about why it's important and what happens in the body. What I'd like to do now is to share with you two key and high-level strategies and then three practical tips that you can take away or, or um, practical steps um, that you can change the physiology of the body. So two key strategies that I'm going to mention today. Number one is using the brain and changing our thoughts. So if you change your thoughts, then that will support and help the brain to become unjumbled. So it might be that you say things to your body and your brain, you might say, if you feel overwhelmed or your brain does feel jumbled, when you feel like you've got all this going on, then you might use things like positive affirmations to say to your body to calm your brain, to calm your limbic system, the emotional center of the brain down and say to it, I am calm. Or I am capable of being calm now. I choose to create calm. I choose to, um, to focus on being calm. I choose to focus on things that slow me down. And so just on that, actually taking a concept from someone I watched online the other day is actually slowing things down. So using language or talking in a way, either out loud or in your mind, that really slows things down. And when you talk slowly in your mind uh, or out loud, it really calms things down and helps with that unjumble. Because when you're talking at 100 miles an hour, it can be really hard for everything to like coordinate and everything feels like it's a little bit of a mess. 
So bringing things down and talking slowly. So we have, um, with that, they, they weren't completely the tips that I was going to mention, but I thought I would mention them. So one is thoughts or positive affirmations. Uh, number two is, um, so I just write down affirmations. Number two was um, slowing talk down, either in your mind or out loud. And let's put a number three in there. What's the third one in terms of thoughts? Uh, is going to be getting them down on paper. Because when you have a jumbled brain or jumbled mind, it's often an indication that there is overwhelm and there's too much on and too much happening. So potentially, if you're able to list those down on paper, then that can help you get it out of your brain, out of your body, down and organized. I have been amazed at how many times I'm like, oh my gosh, I've got so much to do and my brain and body is in one state. I put it down and I think, oh my goodness, I literally only have two or three things on this list, but I thought I had so much more. So that's a really good practical one. So with the thoughts, not forgetting that thoughts are top down brain based approaches. So it's, you know, your thinking, it's your writing, it's your journaling, it's, it's behavior change. So it's mindset and behavior change. But what we want to do, because we know that that can be very limiting for some people who require, whose frontal, prefrontal, prefrontal cortex may have gone offline and you may not be able to access the brain and that body in that way. So you need another strategy, kind of like I call it bypassing, one moment, please, bypassing that part of the brain. Oops, a bit of a runny nose here. Bypassing that part of the brain and accessing the brain and the body and the nervous system in a different way. So that often involves actually using our body and using breath because we can change our physiology and we can change our brain state by moving because um, our brain state is in, a, is in a certain way because it is stuck. And so there are a number of strategies and ways that I would like to share with you today to allow your brain and body to become unstuck, to physically move that energy and shift your physiology. So let's go through, though, these three techniques that I'd like to, practical techniques I'd like to share with you today. So they're all based on um, doing things physically. So it's not just thinking about uh, your brain. It's about moving your body, <laughs> moving your body. Any way you can move your body will also help your brain to help it move, to help it shift, to realign, to get the energy moving and flowing. The first thing that I'd like to share with you is uh, a e emotional freedom technique um, strategy, uh, which is uh, based on tapping and tapping meridians or acupuncture points in the body. So the first one is going to be tapping on the um, kidney point. So where your collarbone is, go over by about an inch and go down by about an inch, and then you'll find some soft squidgy bits there. So those, I'm just kind of moving them around. You can tap them. These soft squidgy bits um, is the meridian. We store energy in this meridian. Now, an energy that flows through the body and a lot of the meridians and energy lines run uh, obviously up and down the body, through and over um, the head and different aspects of the head and to different parts of the face. So tapping on this one here is really good because it gets a lot of energy moving and flowing that can affect the brain. The other one that we want to do with this is we actually want to cross it over because when we're talking about a jumbled brain, then our energy field is often crossed over and mismatched. So by crossing over, we're actually rewiring our brain and our body to be um, unjumbled. So tapping on the collarbone there, you can tap back, you can put the other hand, um, cross over or under. 
So that's a really beautiful one. You know, if you're at your desk and you've got, um, you're stuck on a particular thought or a concept, and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. My brain's feeling jumbled, it's feeling overwhelmed. Then just do a little bit of tapping. Um, you can do it really softly as well. Um, so people may not know what you're doing. You're just like, oh, I'm just, I'm just, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just thinking. <laughs> so it can, can look quite private. Um, so have a go of that one. Let me know how that one feels. Uh, and if you have any feedback on that one. The next one is the brain pull. So again, you know, we are talking about moving the body. And what happens is our brain gets very, um, it gets very stuck and it energetically gets stuck and it physically gets stuck. So what this little exercise does is it helps to create space in the brain and in the body, in the energy field of the brain and physically in the body. So what you can do is you can put your fingers together. So you're not gonna use your nails, just your fingertips. Place them in the center of your forehead and then pull it across to your temples. Pull it across to your temples. And then go up to the beginning of your scalp and then pull that apart and down. And then go back a bit further and pull it apart and down. And so you're just gonna work and you can actually feel, oh, feels so good, creating space. And you can do it quite, I mean, you can do it softly if you like, if you've got pain in your head, or you can do it quite firmly to move that energy, move the fluids around in your head so I keep keep pulling the back of my ears now and then you get to the back of the neck and so doing a little bit a little bit more softly in the back of the neck again right at the base of the neck there once you do the last one right 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 at the base of the neck so it's holding off your shoulders and then you just pull it forward and down so we'll do that again. So your hands are hanging off your shoulders and you pull them and bring them down. I personally like to add this last little piece to it. And that is to go off the shoulder and the back of the arm there and off the little, in between the little pinky and the ring finger and just wipe that down three times. Because a lot of that energy um, is around here is um, to do with the triple warmer, which is the fight, flight, freeze, um, rest and digest, calming, meridian. And if you do it here, I feel it kind of gets a little stuck um, and it just helps to clean it out a little bit more energetically on both sides. So you can do that once or you can do that several times. As I said, it creates that beautiful space in your brain where it's jumbled obviously helps to unjumble it. Uh, another thing that you can do, because we are talking about unjumbling uh, and supporting the brain is grabbing your hands. So your hands end up being like your brain. So when they come together in a little bit of like, a um, little bit of a temple with your um, fingertips together, it kind of represents your whole brain, your left and your right brain coming together. So just holding them together for a moment and then taking a few breaths. If you wanna to add to this, what you can do is bring it down so it's in line with, um, about in line with your chest and then um, looking down to um, the main finger. So looking down to the main finger. So you can see, um, I think you can see, I can't quite see myself looking down and just continue with those breaths. And maybe you slow them down and maybe go for four or five breaths in, four or five breaths out.
So again, that is another beautiful way to calm and unjumble the brain. I know that, that just doing that now for those few breaths, that is the one that really affected me and has really calmed me down. So again, let me know if which of these three techniques um, you like uh, are your favorite and you're looking to try and, uh, and which ones you will try because it's all about taking inspired action. There's no point in listening to this talk and grabbing these ideas, but then not implementing them. Your brain is not going to be unjumbled unless you choose something and you actually take action on it. So let me know which one you're going to take action on and maybe write a little post-it note somewhere so that you can um you've got a reference point or a reminder or maybe there's a little reminder um, that goes off for you um you know once a day that says hey it's time to do some brain unjumbling uh, and just get into a little bit of a routine <sighs> so let's summarize today's talk today was all about doing this uh if your brain and thoughts are jumbled so we talked about the triggers, um, why your brain might be stuck or jumbled, why it's important that we, we talk about this and we look at this, this particular concept. We looked at what happens in the body when, we're, uh, when our brain is jumbled. And we looked at two key high-level strategies. So those strategies were one in terms of our thoughts and our mindset, and number two was changing our physiology. So in terms of our thoughts, we had three different ideas. One is to, um, to, to say positive affirmations. Some people might get a little bit stuck on the positive affirmations if you don't feel like it's, it's realistic and that's okay. You can go to some of the other steps. So positive affirmations, number two was slowing your talk down. Number three was getting your thoughts on paper. And maybe that might help you to A, reorganize them or to see it differently. And then, and then the next part was the physiology change, uh, the key physiology change based on moving the body in unique and different ways that incorporates both the physical body and the energy um, field and frequency of the body. So we have tapping on the collarbones and crossing over the tapping on the collarbones. We had creating space in our brain. Obviously not so quick and not so soft. You can do it a little bit harder um, and taking it down over that triple warmer. And then we also have putting the fingers together and breathing whilst looking down. You can do it for a few breaths or you know, five minutes or 10 minutes to really help the brain, the left and the right brain come together and unjumble. So that's it. That is it for today's Mind Body Reset Talk. Let me know what resonated with you. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'm here to help and support you. As I said, helping women reset their mind and body in ways that modern medicine doesn't necessarily look at. Um, and new ways of healing is what I specialize in specializing in the brain, the body, and an approach that, sorry, an approach that focuses on the brain, the body, and the nervous system. So if working one-on-one -on -one with me sounds like something that you would like to do and you'd like to explore uh, what it would be like to work with me and to support you on your healing journey, please book in for a clarity session. I do have some available this month. I've had some spaces open up. The details are both on my website and on my social media profiles. So in, I hope you enjoy this and it's uh, some new tips and some new ideas for you that you didn't necessarily know about. I will see you next week for another Mind Body Reset Talk. Take care.